Well, I ran into um, one of my colleagues. I used to work at HSBC Bank. And uh, he said, oh, hey, Sue, are you ready for your presentation? I said, yeah, are you coming? He said, no way, I'm going to the blockchain one. It's much more interesting. So I'm glad to see anybody here uh, that we're completing with blockchain. I see some of my friends that felt sorry for me came. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so this uh, idea for this um, talk came out of the, uh, the CPA. And I sort of laughed, and I'm sure Renee did when we first we first heard it, but what we thought we'd focus a bit on is, is innovation, right? And um, um, I'm just chatting with Christine before. She said, I feel like this is my life every day, adapt or die, right? With the rate of change and massive transformation going on in the industry. So we thought we'd talk a little bit of, about innovation and then we're gonna talk to you about two very old companies, uh, one DNH or previously Davis and Henderson and one Canada Post and how we innovated, how we were disruptive, disrupted, how we have innovated and kind of where we are today. Not so much to talk about the companies, but maybe there's some lessons in terms of um, when you go back to the office and things that you can think about, lessons learned from, uh, from these two organizations. I guess I have a clicker. That's probably a good idea. Um, so I'm Sue Hutchison. Um, I work for DNH. I'm a longtime banker, uh, two global banks, and most recently, less than two years ago, went moved to DNH, which is a financial technology company that I'll tell you more about. Um, and I'll let Renee introduce himself uh, briefly when, when he starts, and I hand off to him. So just a little about, a bit about the massive trends, and you'll hear about all of these. You know them well. Uh, we talked a little bit about them in the, in, uh, the opening sessions this morning. Certainly technology is, is altering customer expectations. This is not new um, in the payments and lending, and certainly in financial institutions and banking. We're seeing massive, massive changes. We're seeing a huge amount of money and liquidity moving towards financial technology companies, new ideas, new entrants. And this is happening globally, certainly happening in Canada, massively in the US, and certainly in countries uh, where we do business and where our clients are, which is in Asia, Europe, uh, Middle East, Africa, and North America. We're seeing massive investment and liquidity moving into some of these funds, which are, of course, creating new business models, new ideas, and new technologies. Banks are collaborating, um, and you know the level of collaboration is really interesting. I was watching a panel um, a couple of months ago, <clears throat> and I was sitting there thinking, and it was in Canada, in Toronto, and there was a couple of, um, they had various titles, but one was like the di chief digital officer, and the other was whatever, of Canadian banks, and I thought, this would never happen 10 years ago that two um, colleagues kind of doing the same jobs at different, would be sitting there talking about their business, and through the course of the panel, one of them said, well, you know, he, me and whatever his name is, you know, we talk weekly, don't we? And I thought, this is very different environment, this idea of sort of co -opetition. Um, You know, mobile, uh, I think the founder of Coho talked this morning about the connected devices, they'll be, you know, X many billions, and this is really rapidly, of course, changing our environment. McKinsey believes about 30% <clears throat> of bank fee in income is at risk. That's pretty scary, right? And, um, and this, you know, is partly driving a lot of the activity in the market. I love this slide. It's old. It's from 2005. You can find it, Harvard Business Review. But it talks about technology adoption and the acceleration of technology adoption. So electricity took about 60 years to penetrate 100% of US households, refrigerators about 25 years, <clears throat> and if you look to the right, cell phones and internet, you know, we're in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 years. So just a reminder how quickly things are moving. If you look at um, some of the new, uh, relatively new social media, um, you know, we thought Facebook, Twitter, and Skype were successful four years for WhatsApp to reach over 400 million users. Astounding. Some do not innovate, and this is sometimes a problem because the market moves. DNH, um, deep roots in checking. So you may know us as Davis and Henderson. 
uh, Czech printer for a bazillion years uh, since the late 1800s and uh, provider to all of the Canadian banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions. Um, someone smart said, wait a second, checks are on the decline. It's a little bit hard to read, but it talks about the importance of check from a usage um, occasion. So um, checks used for you know, school fundraisers, for charitable do donations, for rent, still use cases um, happening, but they're moving to the left, they're moving towards um, electronic payments. So a great example is we don't see a check at a grocery store anymore, right? Where you would in the U.S. So that went away, I, don't, I can't remember, maybe 15 years ago. Um, in the <clears throat> business space, we're seeing it move a little more slowly. Uh, but certainly someone at DNH said we need to innovate, we need to do something differently. Um, still important, 46% of payments in Canada actually are moved by check but certainly on the decline. If you look globally, uh, checks are down about 23% from 2010 to 2015. And of course, the piece that I'm sure everyone's watching closely is this credit transformation, which is the light blue, and this is faster or real-time payments or immediate payments, uh, now live in 18 jurisdictions. And we're gonna see that grow very rapidly as it moves to the US and, and here in Canada with our modernization efforts. And, and both taking away from other payment types, uh, but also payments globally are growing, so the, the total share is growing. So our journey at DNH, uh, 2001, mono line, single product, single country, 100% of revenues from checks, market cap of just under $400 million, 2000s, when we really started pivoting the business model, um, the acquisition of a number of technology companies in the US and Canada, a big acquisition in the US of Harlan Financial Services. Most recently in the last year, we bought FunTech. FunTech's a provider of payment hub and uh, treasury management capabilities globally in uh, really every continent around the world. Today, we're number 21 on the top 100 global FinTech. We have about 8,000 clients in 70 countries, and we serve 29 of the world's top 50 banks. So by the numbers, uh, 2001 to today, obviously massive transformation of the business. 100% of our revenue was from checks, and today it's less than 17%. Our customers, we were focused on the big six Canadian banks. Today we have 8,000 customers globally, although half of our revenue still comes from our really important relationships here in Canada. Market cap today is 3.6 billion. Um, we're the fifth largest technology company in Canada. We were managing the decline of checks and today we're focused on innovation, technology. Uh, we're the first company to build blockchain into our payment hub and having uh, pretty active conversations around innovation. Strong financial performance, I won't bore you with that. Uh, we're now 5,500 um, employees, about a billion five in revenue. Uh, we've got R&D centers in Israel, India, Switzerland, and in the US. And we are a market leader in many jurisdictions in payments, lending, and, and integrated core solutions. So how do you remain relevant? So it's funny, um, you know, innovation, we, there's interesting things that companies try, you know, hiring a chef, you know, feeding the staff, pool tables, casual dress code, or kind of a starty uppy office, right? And I think, I think some of these things are sort of, um, you know, symbolic of the effort, but may not necessarily drive uh, true innovation in the company. Um, our, our view is, look at the industry trends. So what's happening, uh, particularly in financial institutions and payments. You know, payments as a service, we're starting to hear about. We actually have two customers working in this mode. And this is really taking the principles of SaaS to payments, right? So think uh, Netflix, Salesforce.com, except that's where your payments are being delivered in a kind of an asset light kind of way, monthly subscription or transaction fee versus um, you're gonna take all the infrastructure and implement it on premise. And, and in Europe, uh, we're certainly see the, seeing the appetite for this uh, 
much more than Asia and somewhat more than in North America, but certainly having some discussions in particular with US financial institutions. Omnichannel, like aren't you sick of that term? Omnichannel, ugh! It's like 10 or 15 years of omnichannel. I think when I look at this today though, I look at it a little bit differently. And it's not around kind of making all the channels connected. It's still that and integrating the client experience, but it's kind of moving away from the product by product delivery and really looking at it from a customer um, experience layer, which is often really hard to do because all of us bankers put in point to point solutions and it's really hard to make it look uh, seamless on the front end when you have all this gnarly stuff in the back, right? So that's where we're seeing the change with you know, middleware to make it all look the same and travel the same and, and uh, really creating a better customer experience. Real-time payments, 18 countries-ish up and running. Obviously here in North America, we're seeing um, a lot of activity here at the CPA and the clearinghouse toward a faster payment solution. Cloud, interesting. No appetite in Asia, I would say. I just uh, got off a call this morning where we were talking to um, our deal team about uh, promote, proposing a community cloud for a regional bank that operates in 15 countries and they're just not ready in Asia from a kind of security and confidence and even the regulatory regime, but certainly private cloud um, in Europe and here in uh, North America, lots of conversations again asset light. I think gone are the days of the sort of 10-year implementation of the multi-billion dollar platforms, right? I mean, we're still in it. Some banks are still working on it, but I think those days are starting to come to an end. And of course, blockchain, if you were interested in that, you'd probably be in the other session, so I'm not going to uh, bore you other than say then, you know, a, a significantly disruptive technology, lots of applications. Uh, we've integrated into our payment hub at DNH, and we are looking at it across the lending spectrum as well. You know, one of our uh, innovations uh, we brought to the market in Sweden, um, we operate the clearing system there, the real-time payment system there in three years, very fast adoption, 4.3 million Swedes use Swish, which is the P2P application. Um, very interesting. I don't know why that went right, but um, you know, in terms of, let's see what happens here. Um, maintaining long-term relevance. This is what we're doing at DNH. We have a dedicated chief scientist role. It's really hard to have an innovation team and to invest money in it, and and not have it encumbered by business cases and compliance and all these things that just kill the innovation, right? So even at a company like DNH, um, you know, much smaller than you know some of the largest banks in the world, we see it. So this is a really uh, disciplined effort to continue and maintain and develop innovation. We have 18 people on this gentleman's team and they don't really have to answer to investments like we do in the business and it's a really good thing but it's really hard to, to do. Um, we have, like all, I think there's a well-worn path of Canadian bankers down to Silicon Valley, right? Um, we, we're, we've been back, what's that? I don't know, I Yeah. And it's funny because I think we still think it's like really neat, cool idea. I can't tell you how many bangers have said to me, yeah, so we were down at Silicon Valley. It's like, right, okay. Um, good for you, right? Like, you know, it's great. It's, it's really great, but it's, uh, it's certainly a common thing, certainly amongst uh, corporate Canada, including the banks. Um, we have our, our own investment in a fintech fund. We're looking for opportunities and ideas coming out of that. Um, we are investing in product development and agile, and uh, we do have some customers that do are truly agile. We have, uh, we operate on us, you know, with sprints, with scrum teams. It really works. It's really happening, but not all our customers are there yet. In fact, most of them aren't. Um, <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, around payments as a service, we have two customers using this with us, both, I believe, our Euro European clients. So that's kind of our story. I'm going to hand off to Renee. He's going to talk to you about Canada Post.
All right, thank you very much. Um, so my name is Rene Demare. I am the Senior Vice President at Canada Post for Parcels and just love working w with customers and different clients and we spend a lot, a lot of time uh, doing that. So um, as you may know, I'll give you a little secret, the post or mail is coming down. All right, we have an $8 billion company and the biggest chunk of it is, is mail, that's 3.6 billion about of the business, coming down by five, six percent every year. That's coming down, all right? So the company is very, very challenged on what we're gonna do next to turn, turn the business and, and make, it grow, make it grow again. And that's what we're trying to do, is trying to figure this out. So, um, and I must say that the company, and I'll talk to you about, about the transformation that we've been going through. And when I saw the title, Adapt or Die, and I went like, oh, geez, these guys are pretty, pretty gloomy, uh, gloomy people there. Uh, it must be the financial service. I don't know too much about us. Is that gloomy? So, but uh, Adapt or <coughs> Die, and, I, and the first thing came to my mind was, um, I'll give it to, to, to you guys for an example. So last week, last Thursday, um, uh, Deepak Chopra, my boss, all right? He's, right now, you guys don't know, we're quite kind of busy. We're sort of like going through this mandate review with the government. Should we be implementing CNBs or not? Uh, right now, we're in, the rate in the, we're right in the midst of our labor negotiations, so there's a lot of activities happening uh, uh, with Canada Post. And he calls me up and says, Renee, um, I met up with a chap that we, I'd like to, us to spend some time so I booked Thursday, so can you come with me? We'll go over to their facility. And this is a startup company by two Asian kids, two South Asian kids. So let's go there and see what we can do to help them out. So we went there. And we sat in a room of this startup company. It had been up for 36 months. All right? We sat in a room, must have been this big. There was four chairs because there was four of us. Amar, Narav, Deepak, and myself. And I think our knees were touching because they were so close. Right? And, and Buddy the dog. And, and, and we started talking, and, and, and this is a startup that is now growing. And, I, and it, as these guys were explaining what they were doing, because I, I saw the volume, I was going like, their volumes are up like tremendously high. Um, they, now, they now operate in 18 countries, 14 different platforms. They were translating, their latest translation was to German. They've established themselves a group in China to do some pick pack to be able to ship around the world. Those two guys, kids, are not 25 years old, right? They're growing tremendously. And so we sat there and we listened to their business and we actually thought, what can we do to help you out, right? There's things we can do now. There's things that we're working on. And there's things that Deepak looked at and he says, you guys got to work this on a long-term basis. But my CEO took the time to sit down with a startup. We do that with big, large companies took the time to sit down with a startup. Attitude, all right? So that's the first point of transformation, adapting or dying, is attitude. And this brings into what we're looking at in terms of business, is that when, the, when we needed to look at the transformation of Canada Post, well, of course we looked at, there's e-commerce. And if you're looking at e-commerce in 2009, 2008, 2009, 2000, it wasn't that big, all right? It didn't explode that much. But in the last few years, it's come on a long way. Our business in, in the e-commerce has started to grow, and then we got on board. And the train is quite big. So right now, we're sitting around the 29 billion uh, mark uh, for, for, for re, uh, at the retail level. It's going to grow up to about uh, 50 billion by 2020. So it's going to be a, a massive growth. And we said we need to be part of that. The business is growing about 10, 12% a year on the e-commerce right now. We're growing, we're truly outpacing that. This year, last year, my e-commerce section grew up, close to about uh, 24, 25%. Uh, so we're outpacing that. And because we're coming in there with key points to help out the, the industry. Focusing the Canada Post, giving it a focus more on the parcel side, meant that it need to go through a massive transformation of what we do, our plants. We have plants around, uh, around the country. We just opened up a new one here. You see a picture. This is the Vancouver plant, 700,000 square feet. If you land at the airport of Vancouver as you're landing, look on the right-hand side. You'll see us. Uh, you'll see that big plant that just uh, opened up. Uh, we needed to do things to change uh, our network. We're doing things that are quite innovative. These locker boxes 
uh, these ones here go in apartment blocks. We figured out, very smart of us, we figured out that, hey, people in apartment blocks are buying much more than the other people on the internet. Downtown, we want more stuff. Mm -hmm. So we put in locker boxes. As we put in the locker boxes, in that apartment building, volume of, of e-commerce went up 49%. Mm -hmm. Our carting rate dropped by uh, 28%. We win, on, we win on both sides. Right. Um, our, postals, uh, our postal, we have 6,400 outlets. We need to transform them. Transform them. I'll show you pictures uh, f further down. We, we now install drive-through pickups. We drive through, but put down your window, like at McDonald's, you pick up, you order. Kind of neat. So when we go to a customer, right, and what we, what we talk about, we deliver parcels. Well, we don't. We, uh, this year we'll do 200 million parcels, but that's not what we talk about. We talk about the whole value chain. Talk about acquiring customers to the customer, how we can help them go through the shopping, go through the buying experience. You guys should be helping out there on the fulfillment all right, and on the payments there. Uh, fulfillment, how we fulfill, track parcels. We have the number one app in Canada. It's, it's a Canada Post app. People who buy 75% of people who buy something go back on the app and they, 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 they monitor where they're going, where, where, where the parcel is. If it's a teenager who bought it on a phone, they check it out 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 times. It doesn't move that fast. Okay. My daughter was ordering something. I said, it doesn't move that fast. It takes longer time. It's in the depot. It's going to sit down there for a couple of hours. Okay. Um, but then why should they come to see us? That's what we tell our clients. Don't come back, don't come to the app at Canada Post. Go on your website. We'll set that up for you and I'll show you how we do that. So we come up and we've set up a whole value chain, a whole series of web services that enabled HBC or the small shop of my Asian groups here to set up shop on their website. So the experience on the website is important. So we are preoccupied by the website. That's where we concentrate our presentations. It's not about the delivery. We tell people, we can do that. Let me help you out on your website. That's been our, our, our strength. Returns, Frank and Oak, company in Canada, based out of Montreal. They have a, they, what they do is they sell to, to men. Uh, they send you every month a box. In that box, there's five things, a pair of socks, a belt, a shirt, a, a tie. What you don't like, you return. The business model is based on returns. Not what goes out, what comes back. They build a difference. <coughs> Pretty cool. So we've been doing that. We have a network, 6,400 shops and we're trying to see how can we leverage the network to help out people. So we created flex delivery, product sets that are, I'll take an example of me. I, I work in Ottawa, my home with my family is in Montreal, my cottage is in Mega. If I buy a fishing rod, I don't want that delivered in Ottawa. It ain't going to be useful. So flex delivery allows me to post where I want it to be delivered. It allows people to hide products from, you're buying something for my wife, it's an anniversary. I'm going to send it to the post office nearest me, at the office, right across the street, so I can pick it up and take it home after. So we're, we're enabling those things to happen. There are the post office. By the way, if you go on Amazon, you buy, they'll, they'll suggest you uh, pickup points. 6,400 pickup points. So the Amazon pickup points are the Canadian, Canada Post Office. So that's where we're doing. Look at a post office today. This is our latest post office. We're opening up one. This is the one in Toronto, Richmond Hill. We're opening up one in Edmonton and one in, uh, in um, uh, Vancouver. Look what it looks like. It's quite different from the post office at the corner that you had now. Here's what it features like. Drive up pickup. So you drive up, you pick up your parcels. Extended hours, 9 to 9, 9 to 5 during the weekend. So you can be there all the time. Uh, Self-serve uh, shipping stations. I go in there don't have to talk to anybody, do my self-serve, and I can send something. And you can have a self-vending kiosk to pick up things to, to, to do that self-serve. Actually, I can ship from that place 24-7, matching up with the e-commerce business. Here's an odd one. There's a fitting room. 
you buy something online, you have it delivered there through the Flex delivery, and you can actually go, try it out, doesn't fit, you can return it right away. So I was showing this to my friends uh, in the South Asian group. They went like, whoa, whoa, whoa. can I use this for a pop-up event? Let's create a pop-up event of what I do on my website at this store. Great idea, let's do it. We're doing it in August. Right? So we're now becoming extremely flexible about what we're doing. Attitude. So to be able to do these, you know, acquiring new, finding new clients, up to them, customer loyalty, we've created this, the, a series of web services that we now go, HBC wants to set up with us, we go to HBC, we say, okay, set up our web services, this will allow tracking back on your site, this will allow different uh, product sets and returns. Uh, um, put in the expected delivery date, extremely important. When am I gonna get that famous packages? So our, f our, our technology, we've packaged up our technology, we have a sort of a group of people that work with the sales force and go out and set up our clients. Here's the slide. We're able to connect to everybody because we partnered with the people that are setting up the websites. Okay. That to us, this is the most important slide that we have to present what we're doing, is that we partner. We can't do it alone. We partner. Our friends, our competitors, haven't partnered. We partner, and we partner with a whole group of people. That so uh, you, you, you can see the names in there: uh, IBM, Oracle, Ma uh, Magento, Shopify, Order Cup. So all the guys are there. And in, in there, there's another group of people that actually will connect IBM and Oracle, I think, right, whatever. So they help us out. This is key: partnering the, for the technology piece. So great technology, the partner to set it up. Because of our growth uh, and because of our position in the market, we're able to, to come up with some good thought leadership. We have data, so we ship 200, I ship to 200 homes. I actually, uh, it's, it's, Pat's your name. Yes. Pat, uh, yeah, this is worrying, you should be worried about me. See, so I, I know Pat, who is our, 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 our Canadian champion of shopping, of shopping, actually that person bought 250 we delivered 248 packages to your house, all right, 248. So we know by that the patterns of purchase. We know from where you're purchasing. We know from different types. So we're able to en enable our customers. Now we protect, we won't tell you it's you, we won't tell you where you live. We'll, we'll, okay, we won't, we'll, we'll protect your, your identity. Does she get to use the secret location so uh, people don't know if we're shopping? <laughs> But actually, we know that person does live downtown Toronto, <laughs> lives in a condo, and we know the area where that person lives. So it becomes very interesting data. We know who's buying where, who shipped from where to where. So if you take that in aggregate, we have 2,963 e-commerce groups. 700 of them are in fashion. So when I talk to the fashion group, I'm able to say fashion, uh, fashion shipped 31 million packages last year. Here's how much you ship, so here's your market share. Then I'm able to go down to um, inside, um, pick one fashion, uh, pick a fashion store, your favorite. Uh, hmm. Michael Kors. Yeah. All right, fine, All right. <laughs> whatever, doesn't matter. So we were able to go and sit down with, with this group, Michael Kors or L'Oreal or whoever, and we're able to dig in and say, you know what, here's where your clients are buying, here's how frequently they're buying. Um, and uh, here's where they're, here's what people are the same that are, you, you don't have these people, you should go up and here's where we'll help you find these people, bring them in. Here's how often they're bringing, they're coming in. And in the future, I'm setting this up, even my friend Don here is sitting in Canada Post doesn't know this, but what we're setting up, we're able to say, we know how frequent you bought, we know you haven't been buying from Michael Kors in the last six months, maybe we should send you a little notice saying that you should be, that you should be shopping back at our store. So I can tell Michael Kors to do that, because I get it from my data, I know where it's been shipped. So we get into that. We, we survey, we pay a lot of dollars to get information from the market. So what is Canada Post now? We're trying to get our thought leadership with the retail industry and the e-commerce. 
trying to transform ourselves with our equipment, with our infrastructure, trying to make our locations relevant again, trying to take advantage of our position in Canada to enable Canadian businesses to conduct business. And with my story with Deepak, saying that we would go and visit the clients, we're actually preoccupied by them being successful from the small to the big. And that changes, that's a whole question of attitude. One thing we're doing, we're trying to position ourselves in the e-commerce segment. We created the e-commerce awards, all right? If you get a chance, join in. So we ask all our retailers, all the people who are online, submit your good idea. So we say we put a million dollars of prizes out there in eight categories, the best e-commerce experience, the best e-commerce small, best e-commerce large, and, and different categories. To, so the, the small businesses that are, are evolving in e-commerce can apply and win, uh, and win, the, win their business. Uh, Russ from uh, Sh Ship Shirt Punch and now Nerd Block, and he started his company uh, five years ago when we started the e-commerce awards. He was the first uh, winner there, the grand winner. He got $100,000. That was his salary for the year. Mm -hmm. right. cool. We helped him launch his business. So that is type of awards. During the event, we gather people in, on a panel. We take the people from different e-commerce companies, we bring them together, and they decide or get to talk with us what they would like to do during the year. So we get the people from Walmart sitting with the guy from HBC, sitting with, the, with the, all their competitors together, and we say, guys, where should Canada Post be going? And it helps us change our attitude. So going forward, um, consuming for us is like right in the middle of our preoccupations. Merchants, loyalty for something, that's something we want to work a lot on. Um, but we see payments there, but we don't see you guys too, too much. Every time payments, I've seen some, some guys come in from different companies come in to me and say, Renee, I have a great idea. Why don't I bring you some customers and I'll charge you 5%, 6%, 20% for those ones I bring you? I look at them and go like, no, all right. Um, uh, customers, I'm good at. We're, we're, people need to ship er everywhere around Canada, so everybody sort of has to do, deal with us. So, guys, no, that's not what I want. What can you do to help them be successful? What are you going to do to make them successful? How are you going to make that a better customer experience? Because that's what they're looking for. Okay? That's what the, the customers are looking for. So payments, lots of room. The, the, there's a lot of, and, and I've seen some new technology coming out that I think find quite interesting. I think it's very promising, but I think there's a whole world there that needs to be discovered for the e-commerce business. So Canada Post, we're, in, we're on a journey. We're in the middle of journey. We're not there yet. We're far from out there. We have a lot of issues, right? Um, I have a lot of issues to resolve. Uh, uh, one of them, you guys have no problem with IT. We have a problem with IT. So trying to transform ourselves, making sure our technology is up, uh, is up, uh, up at, at, at par. Uh, but we need to transform and we need to, help our, we need to help the industry. For us, it's helping the industry. That'll make us successful through time. That will make that we'll be able to adapt to the market. Because we're going to be challenged by all the disruptors like you guys too are coming up along very, very, very strong. So that's what we're looking for. And gladly help uh, work with you guys. Um, if you want to come up to me after the presentation, I'll give you my business card. Glad to have some discussions on how, you, how can we work together to uh, enrich this industry. On that, um, maybe open up for a few, uh, sure. a few yeah, questions. Sure, if there's any questions. What were some of the cultural challenges you faced in the organization as you went through this transformation? Um, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, inside, internally, because they're, they're Canada Post is very operational driven. Well, the operations drive the whole business. And we came in and said, well, we have to adapt ourselves to, uh, to the business. There's been a lot, there was a lot of resistance. Now people, uh, operations have turned around a lot, a lot of resistance of changing the way we do things within our plants. Um, now people are getting, okay, no, okay, we'll, we'll, make a, we'll make the changes. So the first changes that started were very difficult to come over. Now people are going, okay, we, we got it. What do we need to, to change? Um, the things that are coming in to us, uh, 
like we need to use the GPS more. Like it's just not. So how do we do that? How do we make uh, our company GPS fr uh, friendly? So we need to work with the union. Need to, so things like that are, are fundamental, uh, but needs a lot of work to be able to change uh, that around. Um, the biggest point t t to your question is, is mindset. And I must say that the culture right now for us it, it, it is changing. We are getting consumer and customer friendlier uh, than uh, Canada Post. Because Canada Post will say, OK, here are the rules. Here's a guidebook. We have a, this guidebook. Actually, it's published under me. It's like, here's the guidebook. And you stick by the guidebook. Well, the guidebook, you got to gotta adjust. And, and, and the new wave of e-commerce is changing a lot. So the guidebook has to be put away. Well, not put away, but put into a flexible mode. Be able to say, OK, yes, but here's how we can work with that. So uh, going from operational, very strict, to how can we adapt to the market has been, a, has been somewhat of a challenge to be able to do that. Yeah, and I think I would agree with that. I think the, <clears throat> like the, the management and leadership is changing so dramatically in terms of how you need to lead people to be successful. So the, the cultural piece is, is just a big shift where people, you know, to be successful, they have to be empowered and make more decisions versus the old kind of more military hierarchy, et cetera. DNH has just gone through quite a big change. Um, now people are in a matrix environment, and it's people are highly uncomfortable. Those that have been printing checks for 32 years, right? So we still have plants. In fact, in my previous role, I had the people in the plants <laughs> printing checks. This is a very different culture than the software business, which is where now most of our revenue is. So. I think manage being, managing between those, because we're not getting out of checks, it's just that we're building the rest of our business and it's coming down slightly. But So I think the, you know, as with everything, it's the people, right? And it's the getting the engagement for the new vision, which says, isn't this exciting? Isn't that, you know, we understand it's different, we understand you're uncomfortable, but, you know, getting that engagement. And I think often there is a, a tipping point where people start to see and believe, and then you kind of can get some momentum behind it. Any other uh, comments, questions? I thought I, 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 I thought that your question would be: Are is Canada Post going to be going into banking? <laughs> Isn't everyone? <laughs> Sorry, can't answer that question. Um, <laughs> uh, in which areas? Uh, don't you have a maybe a better? So of course we do. Like, uh, all right, we, we have banks uh, with. Uh, is he asking like how we're serving them? Well, we have all uh, all the. Uh, Isn't your biggest customer a bank? Our biggest customers are banks. Yeah. Uh, still in the mail, uh, still in the mail business. Uh, they, uh, if you take all the banks, they would show up as mm -hmm. number one to number ten. It's probably eight of them, six of them, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're they're there. So it's uh, all the financials, the documentation is going back and forth still to customers. Still uh, the best best way. Uh, proof of identities uh, is a big uh, a big uh, chunk of revenue for us. Um, uh, parcels, uh, express post, we lose uh, uh, quite a few millions, uh, dozens and dozens of millions of dollars in that area. So, uh, working with them, Don, you have any other? Uh, deliver tonight. Deliver tonight. Oh, yes. Okay, that's right. So, um, uh, credit cards. People are interested in credit cards. We have a deliver tonight, so you can activate those cards right away. So, you uh, give us that uh, um, within that uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, and clients get that from five to nine in the evening. Uh, that one's coming up uh, quite strongly in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the latest one that we've been uh, pushing with uh, the banks. So proof of identity, uh, the, the deliver tonight, uh, uh, regular courier, uh, direct marketing. Uh, we haven't spoken much about direct marketing, but our direct marketing uh, people, uh, that for us uh, remains a $1.2 billion business. So mm -hmm. a very strong business there. Reaching people is, uh, we're getting, uh, uh, more and more sophisticated, combining the, 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 the data that we get from the parcels with the data that they have. It's a pretty sophisticated uh, approach to, uh, uh, to marketing to people, so the banks are using that uh, a lot uh, to uh, get new members for, for cards, uh, for soliciting uh, promotions, whatever. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of it's happening on that side, yeah. 
Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm sorry. Some more. Right. Uh, the, the, the first one, uh, the first uh, at higher level, first one on that, th there's a couple of things that you can do, and there's a couple of things that are in the works of happening. Um, one is, uh, the first one is uh, um, uh, properly select, uh, proper selection of where you're going to be d distributing, so distributing in a more focused, focused area. So if you can do that, working with your, your, your people that are... Uh, with Canada Post, we can probably focus uh, more and more precise, so you're diluting less. Um, the second biggest item, and I, I know the team is, is working on, is uh, making that uh, piece of material more relevant. So how can I connect that to, uh, uh, to digital information also? So making that piece relevant uh, really enheightens and elevates that piece uh, to a whole new level. Um, so there's a, actually right now it's pretty exciting the things that uh, we're coming up with uh, to be able to see how can we enlighten and bring the, 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 the pieces that are, are sent through mail are, are brought up. So now there's a difference between a piece of uh, pizza, all right, at, at, at 9.99 uh, that's out there, uh, to uh, uh, a banking piece. So there's different ways to be able to say, how can I enlighten that at a whole different level? I'll give you one example, and it's, it's been featured on, uh, we've, we've used it and we featured it, uh, but uh, also IKEA. You take a IKEA, you can scan your, you get a, a physical piece, you scan so that chair and put it over here and you can get a picture of where, what, what's happening with that, that piece. You get a, so like a 3D image of it. So there's now this new combination and that technology is just at the very, very early stages. We've been seeing some pretty exciting stuff on that. And that will give relevance to the pieces of mail there, and you'll be less throwing them out and keeping them in. in. So, um, so yeah, so, so it's, it's working, uh, and if you're, you're mailing a lot, it's working with the team say, how can I make my pieces more and more relevant? Um, uh, so that, that would help a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. No. Mm. But that, but, mm. but uh, listen to what you just said. If you would rewind, you did exactly what you should have been doing. You went to choo choo right? That's to, to, to paraphrase you directly, to choo Well, that choo choo is a sort. And uh, compared to a digital sort, because usually a digital you will dump, there at least you had a physical sort, and the physical will have a higher impact than the digital sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing, the only difference is on the digital side, the personalized view, right? It's like you've already given them access to your information. Sometimes, sometimes, not always. Sometimes not always. So there's a, there's a whole, uh, and <clears throat> God, the teams could help you out. There's a whole new uh, thinking or on the on the neuroscience, and what you see, the the, the impact of the digital piece, how that can work with uh, the uh, digital piece versus a paper piece, how both of them can work together, and how that uh, that new enhancement could be at a whole new new level. So, um, uh, come on, I'll leave you my card, and you can give me a call, and I'll have somebody talk to you about that. Great. I think we're out of time. Thanks so much for uh, spending this session with us, and we hope you enjoy the conference. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.